Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello to you wherever you are. Happy New Year. This is the first video I'm putting out for 2024 and it is one that I'm very excited about. Um, when Annie was first born, to my surprise, I found that mornings were the hardest. Everything just seemed to happen all at once and it was really hard for me to even get breakfast on the table and so I adapted and I learned how to make some make ahead breakfasts. Since then it's been so nice having some of these on hand at all times just in case you know maybe we sleep in one day, maybe we're running late, maybe things are just really rushed one morning or we need to be somewhere really early. I have found these to be so useful and so I'm really excited to share them with you. But before we get into that, I want to take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor at GlassesUSA.com. I am blind as a bat without my glasses, so if you are like me and you need eyewear in order to function, or if you want eyewear for any other number of reasons, you might want to turn the volume up just a little bit and tune in for the next one to two minutes. GlassesUSA.com is my personal one-stop shop for all things eyewear. They are one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the US. They have thousands of different eyeglasses to choose from, including sunglasses, including brand names, and the best part, they started only $39, which is up to 70% off retail prices. I've been wearing contact lenses more often these days because winter plus kids plus glasses, it's just really not a good combo. Did you know that GlassesUSA.com also carries contacts and you can get 25% off all contact lenses? I personally find it really hard to shop online sometimes because I'm someone who just needs to try something on before I buy it. I need to know how it looks on me physically. I have a hard time visualizing something online to how it actually looks in real life, which is why I love that GlassesUSA.com offers a number of different um, tools to help you find the perfect pair, including a virtual AR try-on tool. This tool is so accurate. I was blown away when I tried it. Say you're scrolling through the GlassesUSA.com website and you come to a pair of glasses that you think might look really good on you, but you're not really sure you can go to the live try on option. It'll want to access your camera because it's gonna take a photo of your face. It's gonna scan your face and it's gonna put the glasses on your face and you can turn your head from side to side. You can see exactly how it's gonna look. Like, doesn't this look so accurate? This helps so much. Not to mention GlassesUSA.com is a risk-free shopping experience because they offer free shipping, free returns, and 100% money back guarantee within 14 days. So the frame I'm wearing right now is the Atoto Hermoso in black and gold. The frames that I usually wear are the Atoto Daniela in gold. Again, these are very timeless and I love that these are only half frames. So the frame is only on the top half nothing on the bottom half so it's not too distracting and then i also have a pair of prescription sunglasses this is essential for me especially when i'm driving these are the amelia e waverly sunglasses in gold these are such a classic look i love these and now for the best part glassesusa.com is offering you a crazy exclusive discount on top of any other coupon code they currently have running on their website you can go down to the description box to get all those details click on those links and take advantage of this offer but you're gonna want to act fast because this offer is only available for 24 hours. Make sure to check them out. And again, thank you so much glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. The first recipe I'm sharing today is actually the only savory one of this bunch, and it is sourdough English muffin breakfast sandwiches. Um, honestly, just sourdough English muffins in and of themselves. I've made uh, a lot just as like a make ahead breakfast. They're awesome with jam and butter. You know, that you can have them sweet or savory, but today I went all out and I made breakfast sandwiches. Um, I use Lisa's recipe from Farmhouse on Boone, and I've used this a number of times, but this was the first time I wanted to try doing them like the full sourdough way, not adding any of the baking soda. So I learned a couple things, <laughs> I'm gonna share them with you, um, and I will leave the recipe link down below, but for this you're gonna need two and a half cups of flour, one cup of water, half a cup of fed sourdough starter, one tablespoon of honey, one teaspoon of salt, I actually use about half the amount of salt, and then you're gonna need a teaspoon of baking soda if you decide not to do it this way. To make this the sourdough way, you start by adding all of the ingredients into your mixer, mixing it up, and then letting it rest for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, bring it back to the mixer and let it beat for a little while. 
All of the instructions are detailed in Lisa's blog post. Again, I'll leave that link below. But then I'm transferring it to a bowl. I'm covering it up with a plate actually, which is one of my favorite um, hacks for dough. Instead of covering it with a damp towel or saran wrap, I will put a plate over top of it. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. So I let this rise all day and then you can see how much it's grown throughout the night. So it's good, it's fermented, it's risen. I threw this into the fridge overnight and I was just gonna tackle it the next morning. Now, this is the first batch I made and um, they ended up not really turning out. I learned a couple of things, so I wanted to remake them for this video. So what you're seeing now is actually my second batch. And I just so happened to accidentally leave this out all day and all night on the counter. Thankfully it's winter time and so it rises a lot slower in winter time because it's quite a bit cooler in our home. I was a little nervous about it, but it actually turned out just fine. So in the recipe, it says to roll out the dough and then cut out circles for the English muffins, but I found it was actually easier um, to divide it into 12 pieces and then take each of those pieces and just roughly shape them into an English muffin shape and set them aside to rise again. I just found this was easier and then there's no wasted dough. I set them on a pan with some cornmeal on the bottom to rise again. And then once they had risen, I got a couple of pans heated up. Uh, you want them at a low temperature because you want them to cook slowly so they don't just cook on the outside and then the inside doesn't get finished. And from here, it's just a matter of transferring the English muffins to your pan, covering the pan. This uh, particular frying pan does not actually have a lid, so I just use like a cookie sheet or a baking sheet, which works great. Um, once they are browned on one side, flip them over, let them continue cooking until they're fully browned on both sides and they're done. They're really easy and that's why I love these so much. From there, it's just a matter of frying up some bacon, some sausage, some ham, whatever you want, and then your eggs and cheese and then assembling everything. I just did a layer of homemade mayo on the bottom and the top, added the fillings, and then froze them just like that. Uh, and when we go to eat them later, I'm just going to pop them under the freezer, stick them into the toaster oven or the oven, and just let them warm up, and they are fantastic. I actually had one of these for lunch that day, and <laughs> they were really good. This next one is my go-to when I know that we need to run out the door early in the morning. I've made this so many times. They are my family's favorite. These are sourdough double chocolate muffins. I actually mentioned these in my uh, freezer meal video a while back when I was pregnant with Annabeth, um, but I didn't actually share the video of the recipe in that video. So I'm gonna share it with you today because I have made some tweaks to make this preferable for us. So for this, you're going to need two cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, half a cup of sourdough starter, unfed, half a cup of avocado oil, or what I've been doing is actually three quarter cups of butter instead. One cup of granulated sugar, two eggs, three quarter cup of sour cream, or what I do is homemade yogurt instead, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, quarter cup of milk or more if needed, and then some chocolate chips. I start by mixing all of the wet ingredients first, um, and then I add all of my dry ingredients on top. That way I don't need to use two different bowls. I just mix everything in one bowl and it makes it faster and easier. Sometimes I'll use avocado oil, but I found I actually prefer it with butter. And I usually add more butter than the recipe calls for because I find that these tend to get a little bit dry. So adding a little bit more butter helps keep them really nice and moist. I also found that when I add butter, the batter tends to get a little bit thicker. And so I need to add quite a bit more milk. And I just feel it out. It's the, I mean, the batter should be thick, but it shouldn't be so thick that it's hard to mix. Like it should feel like, a muffin batter. So I just add milk until it's a muffin batter consistency. 
Now, because this recipe has sourdough discard, you can also mix this the night before and then put it in the fridge so that it can ferment over the night and then you can get the benefits of fermented dough. I've never done this, but it's something I definitely want to start doing because fermented grains are just a lot easier for your gut to digest. I'll pop this into the oven for five minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after those five minutes are up, I'll turn the heat down to 350 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes or until they're done. Um, that's what the recipe says to do and they work perfectly every single time. We love these. Next, we're making some baked oatmeal. Now, this particular recipe was new to me and uh, I did tweak it a little bit later on and you're gonna see that at the end of this video. And I will share with you the changes that I made to the recipe, but I'll also link the original below. But after Annabeth was born, a good friend of ours uh, brought us supper, but then she also brought us a big thing of baked oatmeal to have for breakfast because she agreed that like mornings are really challenging with a newborn sometimes and she just found it so nice to have make ahead breakfast as well. And this was just the sweetest thing and it reminded me of my long lost love for baked oatmeal. <laughs> this is something I used to have growing up and I loved it and I forgot about it. And I love it because it's just so easy and fast to make. I doubled the recipe for this um, for everything except for the sugar and the cinnamon. So my measurements are six cups of rolled oats, one cup of brown sugar, uh, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, four teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, four eggs, two cups of milk, one cup of melted butter, four teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then I omitted the cranberries. I left it plain because we really enjoy adding our own toppings on it after it's baked. So we will enjoy this scooped into a bowl, pour some fresh milk over top, and then we usually top it with like some toasted pecans or some chocolate chips, and it's really, really good. All right, now we're gonna make some pancakes. I make this recipe weekly. And whenever I make it, I always double it so that we can eat our portion and then I can also have some in the freezer for another meal. Whenever I just need something fast and easy, I pop it into the toaster oven or the toaster and then that way we can enjoy homemade pancakes without all the extra effort. This is my go-to pancake recipe and I will leave it linked below, but for a double recipe, which is what I'm making today, you're going to need three cups of flour, seven teaspoons of baking powder, or that also translates to two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of baking powder, uh, one teaspoon of salt, half a cup of sugar, two and a half cups of milk, two eggs, one third cup of unsalted butter melted, and a splash of vanilla. We're big chocolate fans, as I'm sure you've noticed. So whenever I make these, I usually do half of them with chocolate chips, half of them just as they are, um, because some members of our family enjoy them plain, some members like chocolate chips, sometimes we have it with eggs, and then so then it's weird having them with chocolate chips, but I like the variety. Now for the last one, we are doing homemade yogurt and granola. I have shared this homemade yogurt recipe on my blog, which I will link down below. Um, but I thought it might be kind of nice for you to see it in video form and to see how it's actually made. I make this weekly. It's really simple. I'll just add my milk straight into my pressure cooker and I turn it on to the yogurt setting, the high yogurt setting, um, just so that it can heat up to 180 degrees. The goal here is to heat it up to 180 degrees. Once it reaches that temperature, you want to immerse this in an ice bath to bring the temperature down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. In a separate bowl, you're going to need a small amount of plain Greek yogurt. This is just going to get the fermentation process started. So then scoop out about a cup of your warm milk and very, very, very slowly whisk this into the yogurt. You only need like two tablespoons of yogurt to get this started. And you want to whisk it in so slowly because you do not want lumps. If there are lumps here, there's gonna be lumps in your final result and that's not what you want. So make sure you whisk it really well. Then you just transfer this back into the pressure cooker. Let it cook on the yogurt setting for 24 hours. That's it. You just pop it in, set the timer, walk away and forget about it. 
The next day when I come back to it, I grab a large pot and a strainer and then I lay cheesecloth over the strainer. At this point your yogurt should smell exactly like yogurt but it's gonna be kind of lumpy and thick and you're gonna want to whisk this vigorously like really give it a good whisk and get all those lumps out. Then I pour it into my strainer and I pop it into the fridge. I'll let it sit all day. Sometimes I forget it overnight uh, which is exactly what happened here but after it's strained this is what it looks like. It's really thick and because I left it overnight it was extra thick and I actually needed to add some of the whey back into it. And then I like to sweeten it with some maple syrup but again like you can sweeten it with whatever you want. You can flavor it with whatever you want. Give it a really good whisk and you're done. Like I use this all the time just for regular eating but then also for making my muffins like as a sour cream replacement in baking or in dips. There's so many ways that I use this every single week. Now for the granola recipe, I did share this in my freezer meals video, which I can link down below for you. I tweak the recipe a little bit from what the original recipe is just to make it, you know, to my liking. And when I make this, I do a double batch so that it makes a ton. I divide it up into four baggies and freeze them. That way I only need to make this like once every few months and um, it lasts us a really long time. It's also really good just like as cereal with some milk. It's oh, so good. Now I usually have like one, maybe two of these on hand at all given times. But if you're looking to make ahead breakfast, like to have a lot of breakfast in the freezer to reach for when you need them, this is how I freeze them. So for the muffins, it was very simple. You just throw in a container and you freeze it, take it out when you want to eat it. The baked oatmeal, I actually baked in a container that had a lid, so I just popped the lid on and I stuck it into the freezer. And then when we want to eat it, I'll just put it into the oven and let it warm up. For the breakfast sandwiches, I was going to wrap them individually, but then I thought that was kind of silly because it makes a lot more sense to just put them in, in a container and freeze them and then take one out or two out, three out when we want them. We'll just pop them into the toaster oven or the oven and let them warm up and we can eat them. Now for pancakes, I like to put them into Ziploc bags. I reuse these Ziploc bags and wash them. Like They last a really long time. I'll put those into bags and then put them into the freezer and they store really well that way. As for yogurt, it lasts quite a while just in the fridge. And for granola, like I said, I'll freeze that as well just to make it last longer. That's the end of today's video. Those are five of my favorite go-to make-ahead breakfasts. Like I said, it's just so nice to have these on hand, to know that when I'm in a pinch, I still have food that I can quickly prepare for my family that's going to nourish our bodies. And personally, I'm someone who loves a variety of food, like especially at breakfast time, I don't enjoy eating the same thing day after day after day. And so I love having this variety of food and making it ahead of time allows me to still have that variety of food even when I'm in a pinch. If you enjoy these types of videos, give this one a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if there are any other specific recipes you're wanting me to share or um, maybe like a theme like this video is make head breakfast. Are there any kind of meals? You know, what would you like to see? Again, thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.